Here's some more controversy. And boy, Rick, <laughs> he's good for controversy on this podcast. I can tell you that. Here's one where Rick talks about Finn Balor and some criticism he received for comments he made about the WWE superstar. You have really upset the internet in our very first story that we have to cover right away. A cruiserweight won't main event the WrestleMania event. Or yeah, Rick, do you regret saying it? You've gotten lots of backlash this past week. Lots of people online are coming well, after first you. Of all, first forks. of all, it wasn't meant to hurt. I, I didn't wrestle. As I told you when we discussed this, I didn't main event at WrestleMania, okay? Right. And I had a pretty a pretty good career. So, um, <laughs> uh, you know, I, I certainly wasn't meant to. By, with any um, any malice, it was just an opinion. Um, uh, but I will tell you something. Whatever website that was that came out, that they list the ten the ten cruiserweights that have beaten me, and which which is all true. I never denied getting beat by cruiserweight guys. But when you start calling Shawn Michaels a cruiserweight, you better be you better be on alert, man, because you will be picking your teeth up. When he sees you, <laughs> I don't think anybody ever thinks of Shawn Michaels as being a cruiserweight. How about how about you? Well, I wouldn't have automatically assumed that he was a cruiserweight. I think people are really starting to blur the lines a little bit. And what I mean is, there's a build weight in wrestling. You know, guys say mm-hmm. they're seven foot tall and they're really not seven foot tall, and guys say they're four hundred pounds and they're really not four hundred pounds. Well, I think a lot of that happens in wrestling. So guys, you know, started to really attack you over the weekend, saying. You know, oh, what about, you know, Eddie Guerrero and Chris Benoit and Daniel Bryan and Seth Rollins Mm -hmm. and Shawn Mike? All of those guys were billed at more than what a cruiserweight is now. And then lots of people made the argument, I don't know if you saw this, that at the time those guys were wrestling, they were in what the WWE defined a cruiserweight weight class because it used to be 225 pounds. Now it's 205 pounds. None of that matters, though. Finn Balor is 190 pounds. And uh, I, here's my takeaway from last week, Rick. I feel like you were looking out for your buddy, Roman. I don't know that everybody who listens to the podcast really understands. You have a great personal relationship with Roman. I think you guys got close mm-hmm. on a European tour a few years ago. And so now you consider him a friend. So whenever you talk about Roman Reigns, you're not so much talking about the character we see on TV as you are your good friend. Exactly. And, and it was no more than just an opinion. I mean, trust me, it was never meant with any malice towards Finn Bale. He's got a lot of talent. I said, I don't know what more you can say. Good looking, great body, tremendous talent, okay? I repeat. So anybody that was offended, I certainly want to apologize. So, My God. So if you think he's a great performer and good looking and in good shape and talented, why do you hate him so much? I don't hate him. Why are you saying that? Jesus I just saw him on Monday. I shook his hand. I don't hate him. I like him. But but he'll definitely never main event, right? Because he's too little. Isn't that what you said? No, but I mean, here's hypothetical again. See, you're, now, see, you're like you're trying to stir this up, which is what you do. But what I'm saying is, is that you look at at, at the last five or six main events at WrestleMania, okay? And right. I know Daniel Bryan was in one of them. Uh, and he's a phenomenal player with a phenomenal following. Exactly, right? Right. But, I mean, I, I don't see those guys. I don't see those guys wrestling Brock Lesnar. I mean, that's just where it is. I don't see Daniel Bryan wrestling Brock Lesnar. I wouldn't see Finn Balor. I wouldn't see a lot of people that are really good wrestlers wrestling Brock Lesnar, okay? Um, Triple H is 255 pounds. Orton, I mean, it's just it's just a difference. And I think that just like I said about boxing, uh, when Muhammad Ali was was uh, the champion, it, you, there, there really was there was no other divisions. I mean, of course there were, and there were some fabulous boxers, but the heavyweight champion was Muhammad Ali, and that's the only thing he talked about. And when he passed away, what a month and a half ago, I mean, the, the recognition that he got. I mean, the NBA Finals came to a standstill to honor and recognize Muhammad Ali. I've never seen that for any other boxer. So have me, you? No, I haven't. I want to ask about this cruiserweight thing again, though, because I do want to get some clarification. I feel like a lot of people uh, read what they thought happened on the podcast rather than actually listening to what you uh-huh. said. And mm-hmm. w- one of my questions, I guess, is, you know, it's not, you're not saying that weight is the only indicator. I mean, I, good Lord, if that was the case, then every year it would be Mark Henry and Big Show in the main event. Of course not. I, I, no, of course not. I'm just saying 
it, it's number one. It takes a long time to build a brand. Right. Uh, let's let's throw that word in the equation too. Okay. So, regardless of when Finn Balor or anybody else of all the new guys came up. By the way, those two kids they debuted last night on SmackDown were fabulous. Um, the amateur wrestlers. Um, they were they were fabulous. Yeah, um, ready, willing, and Gable. Yeah, yeah, but I mean, just they 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 just are fabulous and phenomenal athletes. Um, so I want to give them a shout out. But um, yeah, I just don't. I I it's not nothing to do with the weight. Gosh, it's it's it takes time to build a brand. I mean, look at I mean Randy Orton has built a brand, but he's been there 10, 15 years. John Cena has built a brand. Right now, Seth and Roman and Dean Ambrose are in the process of building a brand. And, and they've been it, there it, for it, years. It takes time. It's worth mentioning. They've been there on television for years. And I think, you know, one of the things, you know, and I, I know I'm probably not supposed to be speaking for you here, but I think it's also fair to say that part of what you meant when you said, I just don't see a main eventing a WrestleMania is based on the idea that only two guys get that spot every year. I mean, here we are now. Yeah, exactly. I mean, it just, geez, I mean, thank God someone's, you're thinking this out. It's insanity, my God. I mean, and it, but it's. I think it's really tragic that the internet will seize the opportunity and just the way they are. It's just. It's like in the old days, man. When it was uh, what was the Pro Wrestling Illustrated? Was that the number one magazine, yeah, right, yeah, man? Yeah. Yeah. If I wasn't, the, if I wasn't the most hated, number one, I was really mad. <laughs> How dumb was I? And if Hogan was wasn't most popular, he was mad. <laughs> you know the radians back then. Sure, sure. Yeah, yeah. So, so I mean, I, I'm making a joke. I'm being facetious. I didn't even look at that stuff. I mean, and I probably have more pro wrestling illustrated covers than anybody alive. But it, guys, it's a work. <laughs> Hello, and... it's a work, everybody. It's a work. Okay, let's talk about uh, some of today's wrestlers. Another weekly segment, and I know you're going to like talking about this guy, Nate MJF, Maxwell, Jacob Friedman, my uh, man. Very inspired by Roddy Piper. Hey, like, Roddy. see, he's got the big ring, man, just like the Nature Boy. Now he's got to buy one of these. Well, I see a lot of Roddy Piper in Max. How about you? Roddy Piper? No, not really. I don't see that. I, I, Roddy was like, you know, Roddy was just a boom, 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 real quick. I just spoke to his daughter last night, by the way, so um, I'm catching up with him. But um, I don't see much Roddy in him. I see more me. The Roddy. I mean, I, I don't, don't talk. I mean, I'm, I'm not taking away from Roddy. I just ask me who I see more of him. I, I like Roddy didn't brag. You know, Roddy didn't brag about his clothes and stuff like that. This kid is, you know, which makes him different. He's talking about the material things, or it implies that he has the material things that other people don't have, and that really pisses people off, especially when it's the truth. Well, what I like about Max is he almost never breaks character. Not not yeah. in the ring, not on the mic, not away from wrestling, not any time. I like that, but today, with the camera everywhere, you got to be careful, too. Oh, absolutely. Especially if he wants to be a little nature boy. <laughs> well, no, you know what I mean. I mean, Nate, how much trouble would you have got if there was social media and camera? Why do you, why do you, why do you people keep bringing that up? What makes you think I did something wrong in the old days? Just Why? The hunch. Huh? Just the hunch. All Just the hunch. Is, I is, was there too. Have you ever been out with me? <laughs> yes, I have. Yes, yes, indeed, I have. Well, no, I Woo! Think, Merry Christmas. I think Max is great. I, he's a heel who isn't trying to be cheered. He just no, that's the key heel. thing. You can't. Always I'll tell you the thing. If, if I saw that kid sign an autograph out in the parking lot of the building, I'd never talk to him again. He, I don't think you have to worry about that. No, no, yeah, if he's, I, I, he, he's so damn good at what he's doing, and it really catches my attention. But, you know, I've seen so many guys in the business go, go out and be a heel on TV. They're out in the parking lot signing autographs. Instead of running to the bar 100 miles an hour, they're walking around to make sure that nobody tweets about what an asshole they are by signing all their autographs. Like a dumbass. What heel signs an autograph? You know, I used to walk to the airport with Hunter, and, and <laughs> people would think we had right around and say, bad guys don't sign. <laughs> Standard answer. Bad boys don't sign. 
Uh, how do you, how do you rate Max's work? I think he's. I, I think it's very physical. I think he's a heel. Yeah, I think it's very good. He works like a heel, and uh, you know, he, 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 when he gets on top of the guy, which is the important thing, he stays on him. He knows when to back up. He knows when to air it with the crowd. Um, by air it, I mean get, give it a chance to breathe before he attacks again. That's a key thing too that a lot of guys don't understand. You got to give the people when you got a guy down, and you and you have him down. You got it. The referee is going to break it. One, two, you break, break. Back up. Just don't turn your back on the guy. But back up five feet. Give the audience a chance to breathe, and get your breath yourself, rather than go in there and, and blow yourself up trying to beat the guy up. One good punch, two good punches, three look ten times better than twenty of these. But I've been saying that for how many years for these kids? Twenty shit punches can kill one good one. Does that make sense? Oh, for sure. No, and here's an example, which I'll tell the young kids. If there's eight people in the ring, and there's eight people doing something right, you don't know where the camera is. You have to pretend the camera's on you. Because while well, one guy's over here nailing a way that looks like a million dollars, there's some other kid over here with throwing punches that couldn't break, a, couldn't break an egg. Does that make sense? They have to all learn to work especially when there's multiple people in the ring, like the camera is directly on them. And then they start to put together the ingredients where they become a great performer. Uh, Nate, don't get me started. I think there's so many top guys in the business now, top guys on top of the card, that can't throw a punch worth a lick. Oh, okay. kick. Drives me crazy. Right, just yeah. drives me yeah. absolutely crazy. But getting back to MJF. If you don't have the fundamentals, and I mean seriously, the fundamentals, which are punching, kicking, eyes, attitude, and appearance. I mean, something that attract you're never going to be, get that that G for great in front of your name. Uh, MJF's 25. Where's his career go from here? He signed in oh. AEW through 2024. Yes, I think it goes anywhere he wants to go. I hope he has a good business manager, a good agent, not some dumb son of a bitch like I've had in the past. Someone knows what they're doing and is honest. So you and see him as a very, very top guy. Yes. I yes. do too. Yeah. Now uh, you either have, either company. Well, would WWE dilute his character? What would they do with him when he got? No, I, I said as he is delivered right. as he is. Excuse me. Right. Yeah. That's why one reason why I would be hesitant to go to AEW. Excuse me, Freudian slip. Why I would be hesitant to leave AEW to go to WWE, I think you have a bigger hand in the creative process in AEW. And I think for a guy who knows what he's doing, like Max obviously does, that's invaluable. Oh, exactly. I wasn't, you just asked me a question. I said, right. he's good enough to be good in either company. Right. That's all I meant. And I, I were him, I, I'm not suggesting he go anywhere. I, I would stay with Tony as long as I could, as Tony was paying me. And I'm sure. Tony sees a lot in him, or he wouldn't be in the position he's in. <clears throat> and he, and he, the thing about him, he's just going to get better. And now, hopefully hopefully he stays injury free. Now, you like the way MJF dresses. You've talked about that on this program in the past. And uh, I do too, with the, you know, with the nice clothes, the scarf, the tie. Mm -hmm. Why is that so unimportant in general in today's wrestling? He's kind of the exception to the rule. Well, I don't know. I, 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 you know, I'm always going to get, I'm always going to tell you that, you know, if I think I influence some people, I, I know I have, um, but I, I, I like the, the look that Bobby Lashley does now with MVP and the guys. It's because not everybody can wear jeans and tennis shoes. I mean, it works great for Roman Reigns because Roman Reigns is the handsomest son of a bitch alive. And Roman can wear whatever, but when Roman puts on a suit and tie, he's even a handsomer son of a bitch. Does that make sense? Yeah. I, I've, I've, I've seen it both ways. For Roman to be casual, have his merch shirt on, walk out in, in probably $2,000 jeans and you know $500 pair of tennis shoes, that works for Roman. He can pull it off. Um, I preferably, I like, I like Charlotte because she, Charlotte spends a fortune, but for her it's work. She dresses immaculately, it's her gimmick, and you've got to live your gimmick either way. 
But the, with him, not everybody can wear jeans and tennis shoes. You want to make yourself look different somehow. I mean, I, and, and that's just, we have so many people that are dressed the same, um, and, and except for the ring attire, that they all look the same if they don't have, and, and they're trying to get themselves looked at and and get themselves a spot with a promoter. I would I would emphasize either dressing, uh, or doing something a little different with your wardrobe. It's, it's just as essential as it is. Learn how to work in the ring.